And that tr track has finished right on time. Right on time, I believe. We are live and I believe it's just about to turn 9 p.m. And we're going to do our best to sh start this stream on time. So it looks like I've got about 26 people live at the moment. If I'm live and I'm audible, let me know. Just give me a shout out. Say, yeah, we can hear you live and clear. We're good. Then I'll know that we're good to go. I'll kind of give a bit of a overview of the plan for the day or the plan for the live stream and we'll take it from there. So at the moment, I'm just waiting to hear from you guys. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Otherwise, I've got some tinkering to do. I've got hearts going up. I don't know if that's for the the fact that the song was nice. Thank you very much, Order the Bees. Um, but just need to know that I'm audible. Let me know that you can hear me okay, A-OK, -okay, and we're good. Okay, I'm going to take that thumbs up. Yes, okay, cool. That's enough positive feedback then. Okay, cool, we can go then. So, overview of what we're going to be doing today. Um, it's not really that complicated. It's really simple. So, if you had seen, I put a post up and I basically said that I had been very fortunate to be able to purchase this little thing and it is a very little thing okay this is a 1827 English dictionary is actually one of the very first um, editions of an English dictionary put in print because the concept of a dictionary is not very old I think the oldest dictionary dates to 1600 but it was more kind of like a glossary of words and it wasn't taken very seriously but the first person to actually make a, di a dictionary was Samuel Johnson and this is a Johnson's dictionary the first edition was a 1755 dictionary, and this is an 1827 one. Or was it 1775? Because that's quite a big gap, isn't it? 70 year gap. Maybe it was 1775. I'll double check. You can probably Google it. But yeah, this is the 1827 edition of the Johnson's Dictionary. Now, ironically, I did a video quite recently on Morris dances that you guys might have seen where I quoted from an 1827 Samuel Johnson English dictionary. But that was one that, that, that I'd basically gone to the British Library to acquire or at least to use. They had it in available in the British Library. They didn't have many copies. It was one, but it was a humongous thing. And to be honest with you, um, I was a little bit naive when I ordered this because I thought I was getting the same thing. But this is evidently much smaller so this is more of like a pocket dictionary i think the um i think the database for want of a better word <laughs> or the diction of words within this book is the same but you don't get the long expositories that you get in the larger dictionary so the larger dictionary will give you examples it will expand upon the word whereas this dictionary will kind of you'll be lucky to get a single line definition and then it will give you a few synonyms. And that's basically the crux of the differences between the pocket dictionary, which I have here, and the larger dictionary that they house in the British Library. But obviously, it's going to be my goal to get a copy of one of those larger ones. But this will do for now. Still, This is still very treasured. Um, I feel very privileged to have been able to have purchased this. I bought it online. It wasn't very expensive. Um, it was actually surprisingly affordable. It was less than many of the books that I have in front of me today. Um, so I was, yeah, I was really lucky in that regard. In fact, just just for comparison, I believe I paid more for this. This is uh, the Manefo book. So this is the um, history, according to Mehmet Manefo, who was like a an Egyptian historian, and he's the one who's responsible for the um, current kings list that we currently abide to um, when we're studying ancient Kemet in regards to the order in which the kings appeared and the dynasties that they appeared in a lot of that is taken from Manefo so I decided I want to purchase this I've got a nice hardback version and I think I paid slightly more for this than I did for this English dictionary but this is this is still in print so you know just for comparison so yeah welcome to everyone who's made the live um just want to kind of give you a bit of that overview now so now you know what this little on this they're not going to be exhaustive but i still think it's a very interesting exercise now today's live is going to be wholly dependent on you guys because this is literally as you can see this is a ask me anything and one of the things that happened when i um showed everybody or at least when i posted in the community 
that I have this old dictionary is people instantly started saying to me, hey, look up this word, look up that word, look up this word, look up that's what that word. And I was like, you know what? Let's do it in a live stream. You know, what what better opportunity for us to have a conversation and you guys kind of like feed me things that you want to see the definitions of. So I'm opening that up to everybody today. That's going to be the name of the day. So it's going to be Ask Me Anything. We'll have this dictionary, which I will look up definitions and I've got this little separate screenshot over here so this gives you a nice little close-up view of words we're looking at i'm actually quite proud of this little setup i've got so when i find a word like dissemination here the act of scattering yeah you could hopefully just about make that out there okay so dissemination which is well let me put my finger in it on it so here it is dissemination the act of scattering. I was just covering it up there. So we can kind of like do a bit of a live look like that. Yeah, you know, that's quite cool. So we can look into that. And yeah, so we'll have a look at definitions. I'm looking at some of the questions. So Manak's already sent one. So we'll do that one probably first of all. But yeah, so we'll look at some definitions together. But also in between that, this is an AMA. Ask me anything. So if there's not many requests for definitions coming in. Um, ask me other stuff and let's just have a bit of a discussion. We'll keep this really lighthearted, like we always do, to be honest. We're never very heavy unless I've got a really heavy topic to cover. But this is going to be pretty open um, live stream. We'll look at some definitions together. Uh, I think we're going to learn a bit as well about the English language and how it's used, which is really important because um, a lot of deception is done via language you know i have you know we're going to talk on a very surface level today but i've had some really deep conversations like um last week i was speaking with uh newbie anada who will be on the channel tomorrow who she's the newbie girl that i know who is going to be reviewing the 1925 video that i posted and we are speaking about how essentially language is you know can be used to cast spells on people and obviously you probably heard that kind of analogy before, or at least, you know, the reason it's called spelling is because words cast in a certain way um, essentially cast spells on people. They, they, you know, they make people think a certain way. They make people behave a certain way. So language and understanding language is actually really, really key. Understand how language is used. Understand the actual pitfalls and the strengths of the language that you speak in. I am someone who unfortunately only speaks one language. I only speak English, which is really terrible. I do understand Yoruba in parts, you know, and obviously a few other European languages, kind of like I can kind of make my way around a bit of Spanish and a little bit of French, but I only speak one language and that's English. And I already know as a person how limited the English language is. So that's just something to bear in mind. So I think we'll have a really good um, go today at really kind of like understanding language and how it works so I'm looking forward to this it'll be a lot of fun okay um, got Kadir Albert who's just dropped me 4 99 on the um, super chat so much appreciation so excited for the live stream by the way can you drop the name of the song man it's absolutely amazing thank you okay so I'll give you the name of both songs the first song is um, by an artist called Damo Yi um, it's called Find My Love and no, show, show my love, show my love. And the second one is by a group, well, they used to be called Need a Name Bro, but I'd imagine they have a name by now unless they kept it. Both of these artists I found on TikTok and I essentially just remixed the acapellas into songs. So the songs aren't available and I can't release them because I don't have any rights over them. So I just played them for you guys because, hey, it's something to do with the music and I love music, so there you go. Um, if I find a way of getting in contact with either of the artists and we actually manage to release it or stream it or do something, then I will obviously give you guys the link. But at the moment, I can only play it, but I can't really share it beyond that, unfortunately. So that's just a little bit of background there. Okay, so let's, I think we'll dive in at that stage. So guys, be active on the chat. This is more so than any other live stream I've done before. I'm keeping, the, the chat is essentially going to drive the discussion that we have here guys so please do feel free to drop your words in and we can kind of like yeah we can we can do this 
together as you guys kind of like maybe think of or request some words that we can look up the definition of together um, and see how people used language 200 years ago and if it's the same now, which is which would be quite interesting. Okay, so let's uh, start with Menak. So he's asked, does it have colours bra- black, brown, red? So yeah, you're th- you th- you, I think me and you think very similar because this is one of the things that I looked in and I was actually very surprised about how... Um, <sighs> not how limited these these old dictionaries are in terms of colour. And it was kind of like making the decision about whether or not colour plays the same role in today's society that it did back then. And my gut feeling says that it, it played a completely different role. Colour, if you think about how colour was used in, you know, throughout history, other than modern times, where we think about colour as being a very binary thing, i.e. we have these kind of like colours, you know, so very fixed colours, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, pink, cyan, like really specific with colour. But you will struggle historically to see colour used that precisely. What you normally see is that colour is expressed in kind of like these groupings and these ranges. So even when the word black was used, it normally meant dark within a range of dark colours. So they would normally have some kind of an object to compare it to, like maybe like coal and the, the comparison would be, you know, something as coal, you know, or to, they, they wouldn't say white, white specifically. White could just mean light or of a pale colour and there'll be lots of colours within the range. So that's just me just kind of um, harping on about the fact that historically they didn't have these very binarily defined colours that we now adhere to. But let's have a look. Let's go through each of those. So I'm going to look at uh, black First of all, so let's have a look at black. Um, that should be here, Blas, Blanche. I mean, that's quite an interesting word itself, isn't it? So we have Blanche. We'll, we'll come on to these. Actually, since we're on black, let's do black. Let's do Blanche. Let's do blank. Let's do all of these and just have a look and see what our kind of definitions are. So we have Blanche, first of all, here. Okay, and that's to whiten to peel, to evade, to shift, to omit, to obliterate. That's interesting. So to blanch is to obliterate. That's interesting. Let's move down to, um, what did I say as well? We'd look at blank. Here we go. Blank, avoid space, a disappointment. That's interesting. So it's interesting that it has these neg- negative connotations alongside the kind of colour connotations that we're used to bland a soft mild gentle kind that's interesting because now bland seem is kind of would just say kind of means without flavor or you know without anything of strength and now it's kind of like a soft mild gentle and kind so it has this positive connotation blandish to smooth to wheedle now let's look at black because that's what you asked to look at so we've got the word black here that has a couple so we have black Dark, cloudy, mournful, and wicked. Oh, let me move that up. You can't see that. So I just realized. Sorry. Get that into the camera view. Uh, there. There we go. Sorry, that's better. So we have black here. Black is dark, cloudy, mournful, and wicked. Then we have blacks with an S. A negro. The dark color. Mourning. Then we have blacken to make black to defame oh, a few other black words here let's see if any of them are interesting black guard a dirty fellow a scoundrel black rod the usher belonging to the order of the garter he is the usher of parliament and blacksmith we know that a smith who works in iron blacksmith interesting okay so there's a few definitions there let's look at some of those other colors while we're on it, so we're gonna look at brown since we're on the bees. Hello to everyone who's just joining. Um, and a question I'm gonna ask, wh- I'll answer whilst I'm actually looking for that next definition is this one over here. What can we expect content wise for 2024? Um, and my answer is, I think I'm really excited for 2024. 
And I think one of the reasons I'm really excited for 2024 is because the way content is going across the education sphere, I want to say. So other content creators who are in independent researchers of a, you know, African diaspora in terms of us in our African diaspora and black history. There seems to be a general direction. And I, we've been speaking about this on our um, Discord quite a lot recently. The fact that they just seem we seem to be gearing up. I had already made my mind up that in 2024, I was going to be a, much more heavy towards, you know, global history, particularly with a particular focus on European history, which I feel very much called to kind of explore and reveal aspects of it. And it's just been really encouraging to see other channels doing the same thing. So 2024 is going to be very groundbreaking in terms of the area of areas of history we're going to cover. Um, we're not going to make many friends outside of <laughs> outside of, you know, the African diaspora and melanated people, but we're not here to make friends. We're here to tell the truth, aren't we? So that's what that looks like to me. Okay, let's have a look at Brown quickly because a few are coming in now. I don't want to fall too far behind. So it just says Brown, the name of a colour. Brownish, inclined to brown, reddish. And then Brown study, deep meditational thought. Okay, so that's out there. So... Um, it's. I mean, the interesting thing is there. Remember, I was speaking earlier about colors not being binary. So straight away, even with brown, it has this association, this ongoing association with redness. So you know, brown and red are kind of seen as synonymous colors, or colors belonging to the same family. So once again, we're talking about colors existing within a group and not being so blind binary. Now, someone over here told me. Could you look up Blonde too? And once again, I'm going to say, you know, we're, we're waving along the same wavelength here because I kind of know where you're getting. Uh, in fact, whilst I'm on this brown page, I'm just going to look up Brunette as well because I happen to know that I don't... Oh, here we go. So Brunette. Have, have a look at this. This is going to be really interesting. So remember, remember this, guys. I'm going to just move this up quickly so you can all see this. I want you all to see this. I'm gonna get the put pen. I'm gonna get the point out, but I'm not going to actually point. But I want you to see this clearly. Brunette. What does that say there? It says a woman with a brown complexion. A woman with a brown complexion. How about that? So a brunette is not a hair color. It says quite clearly there a woman with a brown complexion. Now. I think it's important at that stage, since we've gone down that route, let's now look up the word complexion just to make sure that we are kind of not jumping the gun there because it could very well say complexion means hair colour. So let's look up the word complexion and just make sure that we're not jumping the gun there in terms of what complexion means. So think we're there yeah here we are so let me make sure you guys can see this complex completion okay so complexion guys i want you all to see this so there's no unequivocal kind of like bias here there's no confusion here complexion the color of the face you guys all saw that didn't you so i looked up brunette and it said the woman, a woman with a brown complexion. And then I looked up complexion and it says quite clearly here, the color of the face, not the hair. Okay, so that's quite, that's quite something, isn't it? All right, lovely. That's, that, was, that was a cool way to start. Um, let's look up red, actually, because you did ask me to look up red. So I'm going to quickly finish looking up these colors. And then after I've finished these colors, I'm going to just dive through the comments because I'm getting a lot of requests, which is cool. But this is really interesting already. So let's look up red, see what we get. Um, boom, 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 boom. So those of you just joining, um, if you haven't rewound, we are looking at a 1827 Samuel Johnson's dictionary. We're looking up definitions to see if there has been any augmentation to the 
definition of words over time. And I think we're already finding that there has been some. So that was a really good start. So red, the color of blood. So that's really quite clear there, the color of blood. Now, one of the things that's lacking in this dictionary, like I mentioned before, is you don't get the usage examples. It just gives you one line definitions and synonyms. So it's quite limited. Okay, so there we go. That's a, a nice start there. I'm just going to quickly have a scan of some of these comments. All right, I need someone else to put this mouse. Bear with me. Right now, this light box is exactly where I normally put my mouse and that's just left me with a, <laughs> a bit of a conundrum to solve. Because I've got nowhere to put my mouse, one second. Yeah, that'll do. I'll pop that there and boom, okay. Better, all right, let's scroll up. I wanna make sure that I hit on some of these. So thank you for the comment regarding the remix, Kadir, appreciate that. Um, Cornubia is Latin for heart of Nubia, Nubia in Latin. Now, one of the things I did notice in this um, dictionary, so I'll, I'll look up Nubian actually since we got it, but I don't think it will be there because it's not, it's more about words than it is kind of like groups of people. So I, I think I did remember looking up certain groups to see how they were defined and some of them just aren't included. So let's have a look at Nubian to see if it even exists in this dictionary. Let's see, and even N, N has just got very few. I mean, look, look how interesting this is. Look how many words there are two pages for the letter N. Now is that, is that kind of like telling of, once again, the evolution of the English language? Because we have obviously so many more words starting with N now, but look, just two pages, you can see that. Two pages and then we're off N and on to O. That is really, yeah, so yes, that's interesting. That's very interesting. I did not notice that before. But let's have a look at new, new bio, new belate, no. Yeah, so there's no Nubia. Yeah, there's no Nubia as I suspected. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what else we've got. Um, Am I late? No, you're not. You're not late, Petrina. We've done barely anything so far. Um, blonde. Ah, I'm not sure if I mentioned this. Did I mention blonde? I'm not sure if I mentioned, but blonde. I was very shocked. Is another word that isn't defined. So once again, the question is in regards to the fact that blonde isn't defined. So if I just go here, you can see we go straight. Where's my pen gone? Where's my pointer pen? Oh man. Where did it roll to? That's annoying. Okay, I've got another pointer here. In fact, this is probably a bit safer to use. There you go. Something's happened for a reason. So if we look up blonde, you'll see we go straight from block, blockade, blockhead, block tin to blood. Okay, so there's no B-L-O-N, which I thought was quite interesting because I thought, oh, blonde must be a, a word that's used, but it's not. It's not, so once again, maybe quite recent in the English language. Who knows? Olive, I think this was another one that surprised me because I didn't. I don't think it had a colour reference for olive, which goes, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look because I, I, I think I might be jumping a gun, but I think I did look up olive before. So let's have a look at olive. Okay. So out, O-V-E. Yeah, once again, O is another, I mean, look at this. O is another brief, very brief letter. We're talking about three pages on the letter O. And this isn't, a, you know, it's not, by no means a very thin dictionary, but some of these letters really don't have a lot of words. So once again, it's just interesting to see how the English language has evolved over time. But anyway, let's look up Olive. We were looking up Olive, O-V-E. Okay, so it should be on this page somewhere. Oligarchy is up there. Olive. Okay, so here we go with olive. A plant 
its fruit emblem of peace yeah because you extend the olive branch don't you if you want peace um oh here we go we have olive olivasta which i've never heard of before and it says a darkly brown tawny so a darkly brown tawny is olivasta olivasta so i guess it would be good to look up tawny wouldn't it so let's look up tawny since we're on that line and see what we get for the definition of tawny so here we are should be on this page somewhere tat taunt tawdry tawny so tawny says a yellow like things tanned okay so tawny says a yellow like things tanned okay so tawny we have kind of a yeah a yellow like things tanned and then olive it said like a brown or like a dark tawny didn't it so let's see if we can find that again so i'm gonna do go back to my definition of olive again oh, oh sorry olivasta a darkly brown tawny okay so once again i think there's these words are words dealing with complexion again so olive is used to describe someone who's of a dark brown tawny complexion okay so that's quite interesting there let's move on let's because I'm, I'm gonna fall behind i feel like there's gonna be a, a ton of comments now so um I'm glad it's gloves you're wearing. <laughs> I was going to send you moisturizer. <laughs> yeah, that comment wins. That comment absolutely wins. You know what, yeah? And the irony is, yeah, before I put the gloves on, because I, I, I have to hold the... I've got this under a light box so that you guys can see everything, yeah? And I had to put the um, exposure right down. And so before I put the gloves on, my hands just look like black silhouettes. So it's quite scary. So <laughs> this is kind of like the lesser of two evils. My um, faintly dry slash moist looking hands <laughs> inside these gloves is better than the alternative. Trust me. Um, yeah. So let's keep going. What's up? Okay, cool. Uh, no, no, no. I don't want to go right down to the bottom. All right. So I'm not too far ahead. Okay. Not too much catch up to do. Let's have a look. Um, look up fair. Okay, so let's do this one here. I'm gonna look up the word fair. And let's have a look. What does fair mean? That's a good one. I don't think I've looked that one up, you know. Be interesting to see how fair is defined. So fair, we're gonna be somewhere here. Fairy, fairness, fair. So there's a few definitions, a few definitions. So, fair, a beautiful, clear, favourable, just. Then we have fair, adjective, gently, civilly, successfully. Fair, the female sex, a free market, or fairs. Sorry, that's his fairs. Fairs, a female sex, a, a free market. Those those two things are, are separate, by the way. The female sex or a free market. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't think, um, you know, back in the day down Soho. <laughs> um, and that's it. So it's interesting. I, I, I feel like I know why you asked me to look that up because obviously you want to see if fair is used in association with you know, pale or light skin. And it's not, it just says, one of the things that, the, the terms that you do hear come up quite a lot when you look in kind of historical texts is the t use of clear skin to describe people. But someone could be clear skin and have brunette skin. Someone could be clear skin and be swarthy. So it's, it's interesting. This just seemed like a way to describe beauty. And in some ways it was um, co-opted to mean pale but it didn't mean pale historically. So that was a really interesting one. Very, very interesting one. Let's have a look at the next one, which is the word more. Can you look up more? Let's see what more looks like in our historical 
dictionaries, eh? Okay. This one, if you've looked at my Morris Dancer video, you would have already seen a definition to this, but you would have seen a longer, more exhaustive definition. But obviously the word more is very contentious because we know now they'll, if you ask who the Moors are, you'll be told essentially that the Moors are North Africans, you know, for want of a better word, tawny people, okay? So you'd be told the Moors are kind of like, you know, these tawny kind of, you know, Arab, beige looking people, wheat coloured people. That's what a Moor is. OK, and historically, that's what a Moor was. That's what you'd be told now. But let's see what they thought a Moor was in 1827, or at least what it was generally accepted a Moor was in 1827. So here we are. OK, so here we are. All right, make sure it's viewable on the screen. So we are up here. And this one's a lot briefer than the one um, in my video. I've got a long and a short video about uh, Morris dancers, so please look that up. So it says, more here, a Negro, a marsh, fen, or bog. Now that's quite interesting, isn't it? Okay, so more is described as a Negro, a marsh, fen, or bog. Now, this is where I'm going to actually add something here. Because one of the things, first of all, we're going to obviously earmark and note that the only reference to any kind of people, race, colour, it's quite clear. It says a Negro and there's nothing else. It doesn't say even an African. And one of the things that I want everyone to note here is that it doesn't say a Muslim. And this is one of the fallacies I'm continually trying to correct amongst people when they say, well, the Moors were Muslims. More men, Muslims. no, it didn't, because they were Christian Moors. Okay, they were Protestant Moors. Okay, there were plenty of English Moors. There were Moorish nobility. There were people who were Moors who had nothing to do with Islam. Did Were there a lot of Islamic Moors after 800 AD? Certainly, there certainly were. Um, Europe was fastly becoming an Islamic nation. Um, however, or I, said, I should say Islamic land, not Islamic nation. However, the Moors was never a description of Islam. Now, this is where we're going to get into some really interesting etymology because I was reading a book called um, Ancient and Modern Britons by Dave McRitchie. I would advise you all to purchase it i was actually looking for it and I've, I've misplaced it somewhere i think it's downstairs and then my stream started and i don't have time to pick it up but it's really interesting because i was looking at the definition of more and the fact that more has come to be associated with black people okay now i say that very purposely because more would you believe there's a a, a relationship between this word more here and then this word marsh, where's the word? Sorry. So this word more here and this word marsh here. And the marsh in, in the English language, um, I'm not sure if you use that word in America, is like a kind of like a, a wet kind of area, like a swamp, I think you might call that in America. So a marsh. These two things are synonymous, but they have the same root. So this is why I need you guys to bear with me, with me for a bit. I'd love to quote from the book, but I haven't got it with me, so I'm going to just kind of like paraphrase. So what it essentially said is that the Moorish people, the original Moorish people, were the people who are historically called the Ibero-Mauritanians or the Ibero-Mauritanian people. Now, these are a single group who we know inhabited the Iberian Peninsula and the area of Mauritania, or at least the area we now call kind of West to Northwest Africa. Okay, so that kind of band from West to Northwest Africa and the island, or see, yeah, or I shouldn't say island, the um, peninsula of Iberia, which is on the European continent, were inhabited by the same people, the Ibero Mauritian. And this is something that's not debated, this is agreed, they were definitely the same people historically for a long time. So this is where it gets interesting. What you'll notice is that between the land of Iberia and the continent of Africa, we have a expanse of sea called the Mediterranean. So the earliest thing 
that these people became associated with was the sea. So historically, you might have heard of people called the sea people, okay, who later were called the Berbers. These are all the same people, okay? The sea people were essentially the people we call the Moors because the word Moor has its roots in the word, the same word we get the word mer from, okay? The word mer, mermaid. I think French is mer for sea. Okay, so mer and moor have the same root. The moors were simply the people who were able to navigate the sea. Those early kind of African people who were able to navigate on the sea. So they became associated with it. Now, over time, what happened is these, obviously these moors began to integrate in Europe and different places and obviously along. So they carried that name with them. But what's happened is the the connotations of those words carried with them as well. So if you look up the word um, moorland, for instance, I'm not sure if it'll be in this dictionary, moorland, here we go. So if you look up the word moorland, I'm sure you hope you can all see that. It says a marsh, watery ground. So you can see that the association with the word moorland and the word mar if you was to break that down in English, that's essentially saying ma-ish, mer-ish, okay, mer-ish. So this is mer-ish, a ma, you know, and in English we're known to just drop letters in between. So mer-ish, this land is mer-ish, but we just become this land is mersh, or this land is marsh. That's what would happen over time. So moorish, marsh, mer, all has the same root, the sea people. Now what happened is the word more then became synonymous with the word black so i know latin morris people say that's the root of more latin morris is not the root of more the land or the people were first so the people were called the moors or the moorish people first and then the word morris became associated with them and it just happened to be that those people were very dark skinned or black so got associated with that term so it's really interesting. There's a lot of words that we now just define as black. Oh, that means black. But historically, it was defining a people. Negro is another one, but I'm not going to go into Negro today. But I think I've gone into Negro historically. But Negro is a term that has its roots in the Niger River because they were called Negritans before, before they were called Negroes. And Negritan had nothing to do with the word Negro. It had to do with the word or the, the location of the Niger River. And you can see that in old maps where Negro land is the place that we call modern day Sahel. So in the modern day Sahel region it was Negro land. OK, and that's because all of the people across the Sahel were bordering the Niger River. They were the Negritans who later were shortened to become Negroes. So it's really interested. And Negro then became black, just like more used to be sea people, which because they were all black down the line became black. All of these words can't mean black historically. So this is, it was quite interesting. So anyway, I've, I've really paraphrased that. If you want to read more into that, I suggest you buy that book, Ancient and Modern Britons. It will blow your socks off. But anyway, that was a, that was a long one. Um, thank you for that question because that kind of led me down a bit of a path that I enjoyed. Uh, Re-legionize the world. I don't think that's anything to look up there. Big hands up. I appreciate that. I always like a bit of encouragement. Can you look up the word device? I don't think I'll get anything. I feel like device might be... Actually, no, it could be. Yeah, torture devices back in the day, didn't they? <laughs> Let's have a look, see if device... Let's see if device is a thing. Um, let's have a look at the word device on D-E-S, D-E-T, devastation, device, which is a different word. No, there's no device or oh, device to contrive to invent. Well, this is interesting. It probably has the same root. So obviously we have device, which is to contrive or to invent something. So maybe a device came from that etymologically, something that has been devised. Oh, no, here it is. So there you go. <laughs> it was there. All that rambling. <laughs> I just had to move up a few lines. So it says here device, a contrivance, an emblem. Okay. So a contrivance and an emblem for device. There you go. Um, 
Samuel Johnson will be painted as a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Obviously, whenever we bring our receipts in, you know, when we have African-centered or black-centered approach to history, um, the first thing they'll do is they'll undermine the person who we're quoting from. We've seen it happen with Champollion. We've seen it happen with Devolny. We've seen it happen with Herodotus. We've seen it happen with Pliny, Strap, like every single person. All of these people that they I had someone talking about. Because um, if you've seen my video about um, Ethiopia and you, where I speak about the um, Homer's Odyssey um, or the Iliad quite a bit and I quote obviously about the way they speak so favorably about Ethiopians and their gods essentially were from Ethiopia if you look in the, the, that that Greek text um yeah and then they just essentially started undermining that piece of literature <laughs> and saying that it was just all fairy tales and 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 he didn't he didn't know anything about the like they literally will just throw anything under the bus when it supports a narrative that they don't like which is really really interesting anyway um more we looked up more i don't think i haven't looked at black and more but i don't th i think black and more was colloquial and wasn't so i think black's there and i think black and more is referred to which is interesting is referenced to but i don't think it has its definition because maybe it's more of a colloquialism but let me look let me look because i've said that already today and i was wrong so let me look make sure black and more is not there so we have black guard. No, we don't. So I did look up black earlier. The definitions of black were just along here. And you can see there's no black or more there. It ends at blacksmith. Um, got to keep going through some of these comments. Um, do unicorn and everyone be prepared to be amazed. Okay. All right. <laughs> you got my attention. <laughs> um that that's a way that I mean that was a way to, to sell it. All right, there you go. Certainly got my attention. Let's look up unicorn in this very old 1827 dictionary. See what it says about unicorn. I, I do know this about unicorn, so I hope I'm not posting the spoiler. Um rhinoceroses were unicorns. I think that's actually what their name means. Um if I know if I'm if I'm correct in Latin. I think in their in Latin their their name means unicorn. Um so I don't know if it's a reference to that, but I learned that recently. Well let's have a look up unicorn. Uni uni form. Unicorn, okay. I'm I'm prepared now, I'm really excited here. I hope you got something. <laughs> unicorn. A beast. Like a horse, said to have one horn. There is also a fish called a sea unicorn, about 18 or 20 feet long. Blimey. With a head like a horse and a horn in the middle of the forehead. Blimey. I'm trying to think what fish that could be. I don't know of a fish like that. So this is, yeah, this is stuff we don't know again. Blimey. That, that, that was quite good. Okay, well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you came with something there that's very very interesting okay so it says said to have one horn so it didn't come with the um kind of like the this thing is real i imagine you get a similar definition in the modern dictionary but that that fish pole was incredibly interesting okay let's see what, we, what else we got so we looked up more oh let's have a little go on blimey this 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 comments has gone mad it's gone absolutely mad. <laughs> I'm well behind now. All right. Um, slave. That's an interesting one. Didn't think to look that up. Let's look up slave and see what it says. Because that would be interesting. Because this is 1827. Apparently, it's supposed to be you know, the very height, you know, of, you know, human trafficking on the African continent. So let's see if they have a association of slave with Africans. Because that would be quite telling, wouldn't it? That'd be interesting. I didn't think to look up slaves. So let's have a look at slave. Okay. All right. So, interesting. Okay, slave. Okay, so here we go. Slave. So we have slave. One deprived of freedom. We have slave here to drudge, to moil, to toil. 
slaver, to omit, to smear, was that slaver, with spittle, slavery, the condition of a slave, yeah, pretty straightforward, there's nothing, just trying to see if there's anything before, that's it really, slavish, a servile, mean, base, dependent, so yeah, that's it really, so very largely similar to modern definitions, no association with or outside of a certain people. So yeah, that's interesting. That's very general definition there. Um, there's no definition for Slav. I can tell you that because I can. I'm on the page right now. And once again, I'd say that's because this this dictionary doesn't really look at groups of people. I think another thing we could do is maybe get an old an old atlas or an old encyclopedia, that would be really interesting. And then we can look specifically at different groups. So maybe that will be a follow-up to this. If I manage to acquire a 1800 and something encyclopedia, that would be very, very um, enlightening. Let's look up Swarvey. Ricardo M asked me to look up Swarvey. Let's do that. And we're on S as well, so this shouldn't take too long. Let's have a look at Swarvey. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Yes, you. Uh, yeah, sorry. Lost. I had to do the alphabet in my head there. Here we go. So it should be somewhere on this page. So swarthy should be somewhere here. Okay, so swarthy, a dark complexion. Interesting. Also says tawny. Okay, so a dark complexion, but also includes tawny. So remember, a, a complexion is the color of the appearance of the face okay we've already looked at that word complexion so if someone's a swarthy complexion it means they're of a dark complexion also could be tawny okay so tawny means tanned remember it means yellowish or tanned but this is a dark complexion and tawny so interesting there's your definition of swarthy there um i think i had a longer definition which was a lot more descriptive and gave examples in the other, um, the longer version of this 1827 dictionary. So it would be nice to have this. Um, we've looked up a fair already. So I think this person said. I don't know what this means, but it sounds exciting. The English language only got cracking after the discovery of the Americas. Hint, hint. That is interesting. I kind of feel like I might know where you're going there. Um, we're going to have a collect old French, Arabic, German, Italian dictionaries, which would be challenging. I'm not sure how old they will be. The English were very much the first to really jump on this spelling, spelling game. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the oldest dictionaries in other languages would be. I'd imagine Latin would be quite useful. An old Latin dictionary would be quite useful, but you'd have to obviously be able to read Latin. These definitions lead me to think this is a common language dictionary. Maybe. Maybe. Let's have a look at the front page. See what it says. See how it def Let's see how it defines itself. Because like, like I said, this is a lot briefer than the other dictionary that I saw. So it says, Johnson's Dictionary of the English Language with Walker's pronunciation of all the difficult or doubtful words. So it does sound like a common language dictionary. Um, marks to, and marks to show where double the consonant in the participle. Pocket edition and diamond type. Interesting. And there it is. Date 1827. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. See what else we've got going. Um, Keras One has been buying up old English dictionaries for years now. That would be amazing. We need to get Keras One on the channel. Who, who who thinks they can arrange that for me? Legend of hip hop there. Um, Brazilians like the Caribbeans have hundreds of words for shades of black or brown. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. Gloves to protect that old book. Yeah, I've got the gloves on. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just said that. Look, me and me and Akets of Harry are thinking the same thing. Let's get Keras on on for a live stream. Fairy, 
Interesting. I wonder why you want to look up that word. That's interesting. Let's have a look at that word, fairy. Because I was on that when I looked up fair. So I could have looked up fairy then. I kind of skipped over. Let's have a look at fairy. You could tell me where you're going with this one. So here we go. Um, it's going to move down slightly so we can all see. So fairy. Fairy. And... Enchantress, an elf, a fae. And you know what I'm going to say, what the heck is a fae? <laughs> so an enchantress, an elf, a fae. It doesn't say anything about a winged creature. Oh no, here we go, we've got another line. We've got two. A given by or belonging to fairies. Okay, no, that doesn't tell us anything. So an enchantress, an elf, a fae. That's interesting because pygmies were present on the English Isles for a long time. So a lot of people think elf, the stories of elves relate to pygmies, which are obviously the shorter um, stature of modern human. But they are fully, obviously, modern. They are fully human. Um, and there is a lot of evidence to say, actually, that pygmy blood um, was quite heavy in royalty. I think King Henry VIII was a, a whopping five foot three inches tall. Um, and he was quite an average height for the men of his time. So you could see, imagine that a lot of the pygmy blood in that time was uh, um, yeah, quite extensive. At least that's what I was told. I hope that's, that's still a fact. I know things are kind of like <laughs> change. I'm, gonna, I'm looking at the word fae to see if I can get any. So a fae, a fairy, an elf, faith. That's what it says for fae. Variant. I don't know what that means. So I've got I've got nothing to add there, but that's a that's quite interesting. Let's keep going. Um, can you look up the word world? And I'm gonna look at if I, I'm gonna let me look up ruddy first of all because that was asked first of all. So I'm gonna look up the word ruddy. We looked up swarthy already, which is good. We got that one out of the way. Let's have a look at the word ruddy. Oh right, on, right, right on, right on cue. So rudiment, rude, ruddy, approaching to red, yellow. So ruddiness, approaching to redness. So ruddy is very much associated with the color red. You can see here from these two definitions. So ruddiness is approaching to redness, and ruddy says approaching to red, yellow. Okay. So those are your two definitions for ruddy. So I'd imagine ruddiness is something that's universal. Once again, we're talking about color groups, and I guess if something's ruddy, it can be any any tone. Really, just needs to be approaching redness. So I would say Nubians are ruddy in comparison to other Africans because they have a much more red undertone. A lot of Nubians. Um, which is obviously a, a generalization, but it's obviously something I've noted on, on on their phenotype. So, would they? That's I mean, that's a question mark. Would they? Would that word have been used to describe them? I can't say that definitively, but it's interesting to note. Um, let's have a look at. So I want to look up the word world because someone asked me to look up the word world. So we're looking at the word world, 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 world. Maybe after this, after that, should be somewhere on this page. Towards the back here. I think it's somewhere to, okay, here we go. So, world, the earth, mankind, universal empire. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Um, worldly, a human bent upon this world. Okay, and worldling. That's a well, that's an interesting word. One who idolizes his money. That's quite a biblical definition there, isn't it? Okay. So world, the earth, mankind, universal empire. Would be nice to get a slightly longer definition. Um, but there, there you go. Let's see what else we got. Um boom. boom, boom, boom. 
fair means blank without colour, black, not in the dictionary. So the, the definition we saw, fair, it just means, essentially means beautiful, means something that's beautiful, doesn't have any colour association. I think the closest color we got to a colour association was clear, which, yeah. Um, and then that's a, I explain, that's a descriptor that's used quite a lot for people in conjunction with a complexion. So they'll say they were had clear skin that was swarthy or whatever. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. Could you please look up coloured? My guess is we won't find a definition for coloured because that feels like a really new term. Well, let's have a look, see if it's there. No harm. Just take a second. Com call. There we go. So it'll be somewhere on this page if it is there. So, well, let's look up color first of all. Because it's interesting while I was speaking with you guys about color earlier, about how it's something that's become very binary and perhaps in these times was not, you know, we taught these very primary and secondary colors as a part of our education. But is that really the way to think about colour? Is that the way historically colour was thought about? I don't think it was. So colony. Oh, colony. Let's look up that. That's quite interesting. A body of people drawn from the mother country to inhabit some distant place. The country so planted. Colony. There you go. So that's pretty much matches definition today, which is good. Colour. A green, red, blue a pretense so color a green red blue a pretense and this is color to dye to tinge to blush to cloak there's nothing for colored we have colorable which says specious and plausible coloring an art in painting yeah we know what that means colors a banner flag or streamer so it's colours associated with a house of some sort. Yeah, and that's it really. So there you go, that's it for colours. Okay. Let's keep going. Um, Calm Way Yes says, this is in incredible, so interesting. Thank you, appreciate you. Um, I think it's really interesting. I think we've looked up more, we've looked up more just says Negro. More now means dark complexion. That's interesting. Jews. I, I like I said, this is this dictionary isn't very hot on groupings of people, but I will look up Jews. I will look up Judah as well. And I think whilst I'm at it, I'll look up Israel because all of those will be quite interesting just to see if there's anything about those kind of like word associations so i'm on i first of all and then i'll move on to j so i'm going to look up if there's anything in regards to israelite or israel isos isos i Lond, no 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 so nothing to do with that let's have a look if we've got anything to do with jew we have jewel a precious stone, which we know. Jeweler, one who deals with precious stones. And then Jetry, made of jet black as jet. Yeah, nothing for Jew there. And what was the other one you asked me to look at? No, I think that's it. I'll see if there's anything with J-U, like Judah or Judean or anything like that. Jug, Judiciary. No. Nothing there. Uh, where is where, where Judaism? Oh no, here we go. So we've got Judaism. There you go. That's something. The religion of the Jews, <laughs> which is interesting. Because then it won't give us the word for Jews. No, it won't. Jews harp, a small wooden, a small musical instrument. No, that's it. So nothing to find there. Just got Judaism, which is the religion of the Jews. So nothing, nothing interesting or kind of groundbreaking there. That was an interesting one to look up. Um, it says, this is fantastic work, my beloved bro brother. You should, um, when time permits, look at the 1751 essay by 
uh, you know what? Ironically, I was um, reading about this today, um, this speech or essay by Benjamin Franklin as he describes the world. And he talks about obviously the fact that, you know, the basically that all of the nations of the world, and he mentions like, you know, Swede, the Swedes, the Germans, the, can't remember exactly who he mentions, but he mentions all the, the Italians and the Spanish are principally swarthy. He talks about the fact that the Africans are um, black and tawny. He talks about the fact that the Asians are principally tawny. And he said that the only nations that are white, the only white nations are England and I can't remember the other one he mentions. Um, and that's really interesting. Um, I mean, the, the, yeah, it's just, it's very interesting um, how much it's changed in 200 years. And I've got lots of theories about, I've got lots, by the way, here's a big spoiler alert. I've got a lot of videos coming up about, you know, black presence in Europe. And it's, it's very substantial. It really is very substantial. Um, I think I kind of gave a little bit of a heads up the other day that you should watch Without History's latest video. I really liked it. And you should also watch Kapruki's latest videos too two videos on the subject. I've spoke about my one about Morris dancers, but I've got several more coming out. Um, and at the moment I'm just reading. Um, I've got a load of books that I'm trying to get through at the moment. So I'm reading Nature Knows No Color Lines, um, Ancient and Modern Britons, um, Black Tudors, The Negro Question. There's lots of really good books that cover this subject and I'm really pleased about that actually because there wasn't <laughs> or at least the the not that i mean the books were there but the knowledge of where to find all of these books wasn't there and they really are very 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 um accessible in this day and age so yeah there you go um can you look up ethiops and egyptos that's an interesting one let's look up let's see if we, i don't think we'll find egyptos because those both sound like Latin words, but let's see if we can find maybe Ethiopian and Egyptian. Like I said, this book isn't great on ethnicities, but I really don't mind looking it up because it only takes a second. So let me look up Ethiopian, first of all, because at least that's quite, a, I'd imagine that's quite a common term that was used around these times. And I think I'll look up African as well whilst I'm at it, because if we're going to look up Ethiopian, we may as well look up African and just see what we get. I think it will just say one from Ethiopia and one from Africa. <laughs> We've got to be totally honest with you. So we have ethics, ethi, etiology, etiology, ethereal. I don't think we're going to get anything here. Etymology. No. Yeah, we're not going to get anything. I don't think there's anything in regards to ethi, ethnic, ethnic. Oh, look at this. How how, how about this? <laughs> Every now and then something just gets thrown away. Look at the definition for ethnic. So ethnic's what they what they've decided to call people. A heathenish, a heathen, a pagan. How's that? <laughs> the definition of ethnic is a heathen, a pagan. So that's really negative. You know, they've literally deliberately chosen to call people you know ethnic minorities or ask you what's your ethnicity so essentially what's your source of paganism <laughs> what's the heathen the, which heathen <laughs> behavior are you bring into this land that's what they're asking when they're asking for your ethnic minor or your ethnicity isn't that interesting remember i said words are spelling so you have to be very, very careful of how you use words. That makes me almost want to not use that word anymore. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, blimey. Um, I think so too. Khadija said it's very interesting. I'm, I think this is interesting. Um, Af I said I was going to look up African. Let me do that quickly before I scoop for any more comments because I just want to see what it says if it says anything and it didn't have anything for Ethiopian so that makes me not super confident that we're going to get something for African or Africa let's have a look so 
so a f f Afraid, afresh, nothing for African. No, we're not going to get anything there. So nothing for African, unfortunately. Okay. Watching this and learning while rocking a dog pound instrumental um, as a music bed magic fam. <laughs> I like that. It sounds like a good, sounds like a good place to be. Look up the word American. That would be interesting. I don't think we'll get that either. I don't know. I'm not optimistic, but I have been wrong already today. So let's have a look. See if you've got anything for American. So, Amer... Amerks... Amersment... Amethyst... Nothing. No. Yeah, I think my pessimism was... Was correct on this occasion. There's nothing in terms of American... Amersment. No, nothing there. It'd be interesting when they started using the term to know when they started using the term American. I don't think this is evidence that they weren't using it in this at this stage. I'm gonna look up the word Negro really quickly, actually, just based on some of the stuff I said earlier. I'm gonna look up the word Negro and see if they rule it more with the with color. Actually, I will look up Niger as well. Because I know that's a word they like to use. Or with people. So. We have. Well this is quite interesting. We have niggardly. Okay. Sordid parsimonious. Niggardly here. Av avariciously or meanly. So we have those words, and these words, in my view, predate obviously the use of the, the you know the slang, um, the kind of like colloquial, defaming word that's used against um, black people today. But it's interesting that the word that predated it is a very negative word. So it was very deliberate calling, you know, black-skinned people that that word that wasn't associated. Because when you think about it, where'd that come from? It doesn't sound anything like Negro. It doesn't sound anything like Niger. It doesn't sound anything like Niger. So why do they suddenly start calling people that word? And this is your clue, okay? That word was to associate them with this niggardly behavior, okay? Mean, sordid. Very interesting. Sorry, I've, I've got it out of the screen there so you can see it. So you can see it there. Are viciously, meanly, and then I'm down at the bottom here. It says a sordid, parsimonious. So these kind of like negative loaded word, a sordid, covetous person, person. Okay, it's a niggard. Now, niggard is probably not a word that you've heard of before, but this is a word that predates that modern slang. So it's interesting they, they've co-opted, almost co-opted a existing negative word with really negative kind of lustful, mean connotations and, and spun the existing word. And it, but yeah, you can see the etymology here has got nothing to do with colour which is very, very interesting. It was just an, it was just a word before. But anyway, I, was, I want to look up Niger. But that's just, that was just interesting to know. If it's there, it's not there. I'm going to look up the word Negro as well. It should be on this page. Oh, so have a look here. A Negro is a Blackmore. <laughs> Which is really interesting because Blackmore, I know for a fact, is not in this dictionary. So if you have a look over here, Negro, where have I just lost it? Where have we gone? Mm, here we go, Negro. So Negro here, and just simply says a black moor. Doesn't say anything else. That's interesting. And I know black moor isn't there, so I know most, everyone's going to say, well, can you look up black moor now? But I, I've, it, it's not there. So Am American's not there. We look for that. If goblin isn't there, try ghoul. Goblin and ghoul, interesting. Once again, don't know where you're going with this, but I am interested to find out. 
Let's get to G. Let's see what we're saying with Goblin and Ghoul. Okay. Goblin, an evil spirit, a fairy. Is that where you're going? <laughs> a fairy, a phantom. Okay, so Goblin is an evil spirit, a fairy, a phantom. Interesting. Well, let's have a look at some of these God words since we're actually on the page. So we have God, the supreme being. God child, a child for whom one becomes a sponsor. That's the same as today. Goddess, female ethnic divinity. Interesting, ethnic divinity. So a female pagan divinity. So this is very much acknowledging England as a Christian state here, isn't it? Because they didn't have to use that word ethnic. And remember, ethnic doesn't mean what we mean today. It means pagan. Okay, that's what it means. It means, yeah, that's a heathen. So a female heathen divinity is a goddess. Interesting. Goddess-like. And you know what's really interesting about that? Because we know the religion of Europe not too long before kind of the spread of Roman Catholicism was the worship of the Black Madonna, Isis and Horus, which was almost universal across, you know, across the, you know, entire <laughs> um, entirety of Europe. Um, so they would have been used to, well, you at least, at least think they wouldn't have been too far away from goddesses, but by this time, this dictionary is being printed, they're calling goddesses heathens and pagans, because that's what the word goddess or, yeah, ethnic means, sorry. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Let's look at the word good, actually, as well. See if there's anything interesting there. So we have good, proper, wholesome, sound, not evil. Then we have good, the contrary to evil, virtue. And then goodliness, beauty, grace, and elegance. Yeah, nothing, no, nothing surprising there. Okay. Let's have a look. What else do we have? Um, I agree with the root of myrrh. Not sure if it's the exact same as the historic sea peoples that's often associated with Philistines. Ultimately, they don't know who the sea people are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm willing to look further into that. Um, I do know. Uh, yeah. I mean, historically, from my research, I always always associate the sea people with North Africa. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's definitely something. A fen is boggy. A fen is a boggy. Was also a boggy, marshy, marshy piece of land. Okay, thank you. I think I might have asked that earlier. Could you look up the word gender? That's an interesting one. So Olive Pendergast said, look up the word gender. Let's have a look. See what we get there. So gen, genuine, gen, generate, genial, genealogical oh that'll be interesting what does genealogically mean because when you think about it genes are a new thing we've got we've got we've got words for genial well here we go gender first of all gender to beget to cause to produce and then we have above gender a sex a kind a sort okay so that's yeah that's pretty pretty standard that's fine. That's kind of what we call it today. Now, genealogical, this is interesting, a pertaining to pedigree. A, geneal a genealogist, think, look at this. We have genealogists back in the 1820s. Genealogists, one skilled in genealogy. Genealogy, history of family succession. Okay, well, there you go. It's quite straightforward then. So it's a studying of one's history. Nothing to do with the genes, but that obviously came later. Interesting. Um, next some. Um, there we go. Let me, I'm just gonna. I'm kind of skipping through now, reading um, a lot of very similar 
requests come in. Ooh, I am falling way behind. Uh, How about the term credit? Let's have a look if the term credit is there. Oh, you go right at the bottom. So we've got credit here. Credit, a belief, honor, trust reposed. And credit to believe, trust, and confide in. That's interesting, isn't it? So it's a belief or a trust. It's funny because I looked at the word mortgage and the word mortgage is associated with death, which is really interesting. I'll, I'll look it up in this one, see if it's the same one. So a creditor is one who trusts or gives credit. So one who trusts or gives crust will gives trust essentially because it said their credit is a trust. Interesting. Planning on getting a mortgage there, Rogish. <laughs> um I wanna to go to the word mortgage actually on that note because yeah, like I said, it was interesting, at least in the expansive version of this dictionary, mortgage all seemed to be associated with death bonds which is really quite interesting, obviously, because the word mort means death. This one seems a bit... Oh, this one. This one's a lot more palatable than the one I looked up in the longer dictionary. So we have mortgage here. To pledge lands. Then we have another mortgage. One who takes a mortgage. And a mortgager, one who gives a mortgage. Okay, so nothing nefarious there. <laughs> completely contradicting everything I just built you up for. Um, I promise you the definition was a bit different in the <laughs> longer version. <laughs> so I don't know if this one's been sanitized for, for the live stream. There you go. Um, okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's see where we are. Henry VIII is probably Pictish. I don't know, but that kind of looks interesting. So I'm going to put it on screen. Um, ruddy, brown, red, brown versus ruddy, pinkish, pale. Interesting. Um, so it says here, you're looking up some good keystones to knowledge words. I challenge group to look up these words in the old... 1500s dictionary of their own. Well, that's interesting because the problem there is there was no dictionaries in the 1500s. Dictionaries are a very new occurrence. Um, and this is, I think this was the conversation that, this is likens to the conversation that I was having last week that I mentioned earlier, is the fact that when you think about what a dictionary does, what's the purpose of a dictionary? The purpose of a dictionary, the purpose of language, first of all, is so people can communicate and understand you know, you're going to transmit a message and the other person is going to understand the message you've transmitted. The purpose of a dictionary is to tell you how to translate a message. And when you think about it, a dictionary plays a similar role to when someone turns on the news at home, you know, and it's kind of dictating to people how to process information. So, you know, this is, this is what this word means. It doesn't definitively... I don't know. I found it interesting that dictionaries seem to be birthed in and around the same time that people's freedoms were being restricted. I felt, I almost felt like the two things were related. It's like we have to get control of the language and the use of the language and the understanding of the language. So yeah, the the long and short of it is in the time of Shakespeare, actually Nubianada raised a really good point because she said um, Shakespeare used to make up words which wasn't uncommon for, you know, for people in literature to do this, you know, if they needed a word, let's just make one up. That kind of, uh, that kind of says, you know, 
that 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 says what you want it to say. There was a, I used to have a um what was the phrase? There was a couple of phrases I used to say that used to really irritate people. So one was keep yourself warm. <laughs> that was a that was a Shakespearean diss. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to say that to people, yeah, whatever, keep yourself warm. And they used to look at me like I was weird. That's my like my little being clever there. And what's the other one? A wench. That was it. I don't think Shakespeare made that up. But um, I used to get a lot of fun irritating um, women calling them wenches. <laughs> Listen, you lusty wench. Hold it down. <laughs> uh, I'm stupid. Sorry. Um, let me let me let me let me move on. But yeah, the point is the point I was making is yeah, Shakespeare used to used to make up words, you know. So. And then you have dictionaries come along and all of a sudden all that kind of creativity of the language disappears. I don't know, it's just very interesting. <sighs> this is an interesting point. With regard to the pygmy height, this is what we were discussing earlier, it's always made me wonder about what is really meant by giant in ancient sources. Is a giant just a very tall man by today's standards since the ancient... Africans, yeah, that's I know where you I know where you're going with that. Since the Asian Africans, um I'd imagine you're gonna say were taller, but you'll you run out of comment space. But yeah, I kinda I kinda get where you're going there. It's interesting. Um because when you think about it, if if you if you're looking at a, a nation of pygmies, then the first tall men that come along are going to be classified as giants. You know? So that's very interesting. And and if you look, for instance, you have neighbouring if you go to Africa, for instance, and you go to the Dinka, the Dinka are the, I think it's the Dinka, are the tallest people in the world. So they they, they are a massive population in South Sudan. And literally, neighbouring the Dinka, um, to the south, you get some of the smallest groups of people. You know, um, the Twa of, you know, the Twa group of Rwanda, they're, they're tiny. So it's just very interesting that you have two neighbouring populations, one of them, extremely tall um tootsie are incredibly tall as well and the neighboring one's incredibly short um and that kind of if you think about it as well that does kind of put in perspective some of the statues that you see in ancient kemet as well um you know comes to mind it's kind of like suhuri statue where he's sitting on the throne and then there's kind of like a shorter version of him at least that's what they say to his right but that could have been like a pygmy representation or even uh, a pygmy member of the family who knows just just interesting to note these little differences and these little quirks of of old where we place them um woolly yeah let's look up woolly that's a good one because that is a word that's used quite a lot to describe the hair of africans so it'd be interesting to see if we have a Definition of woolly that is a bit more informative. So, wool is here. We obviously know wool is the fleece of a sheep. Woolly, a compile a so it says here, a composed of or so it says composed of or resembling wool. So, this is just a very literal definition here just as composed of and resembling wool woolly there composed of or resembling wool so that'd be i'd imagine resembling cotton wool which is woolly yeah pretty much what you expect um any others That's true. J J didn't exist before the fifteenth century. Ooh, what was the definition of Viking two hundred years ago? Let's have a look. I have no idea what to expect here. Vikings is like a really touchy subject for some people, isn't it? Some people really are really emotionally invested with that they have Viking ancestors. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not even going there, man. <laughs> I we was Vikings. Okay, man. Okay, I believe you. I believe you. 
Okay, <laughs> let's have a look, see if we can find the definition for Vikings. Vigorous, vignette. No, nothing for Vikings. That's a bit disappointing. View, vignette. No, am I going the wrong way? No, I'm not vigorous, vile. Yeah, nothing for Vikings. Nothing for Vikings. Uh, that was so promising as well. Um, we've looked up more. Sorry, King Henry. Uh, Barbary. That's an interesting one. Let's see if we've got a definition for Barbary. I mean, I imagine it'll just mean barbarous. Let's see one who is barbarous. Barbarian. Well, let's have a look anyway. So we're looking up Barbary. Barbary, Barbary, Barbary. Baron, Barak, Bar. No, we've got Barge going back here. Barbary tree, Barber. <laughs> One whose trade is to shave. We know that already. We're looking for barbarity, inhumanity, cruelty, barbarism, ignorance, inhumanity, an uncouth manner of speaking or writing. Um, barbarian, a rude, uncivilized person, a savage, a person without pity. And then that's it, barbecue. So we haven't got barbary. So to speak, we've just got barbarous, rude, uncivilized. So it's all the same kind of family. Barbed, furnished with armor, beaded or jagged with hooks. So we have like barbed wire over here in the UK. I'm not sure if you call it the same way in America. You probably, you guys probably call it. We have, we have spiky cable. <laughs> So that's just me being my, my English humour, just mocking um, the way Americans just choose a very normal phonetic description for things. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to put this on because it's such a nice comment. So I'm add it there. I just want to say you're really awesome and inspirational. Thank you. And that's really encouraging for me. Hebrew. Interesting. Did not think of that. Let's have a look and see what Hebrew brings up. Because I think we looked and we didn't have a definition for Jew, did we? Although it was referenced. Let's have a look if Hebrew is here. So, heck, do heb, Hebraism, Hebrew, it. In an idiom, sorry. Hebrican, one skilled in Hebrew. Hebrew, the Jewish language. That's all we've got there. So we've got Hebrew, the Jewish language. That's our definition. And nothing else other than that. So Hebrican, Hebraism. Yeah, and that's it. It's interesting they have Hebrew and they don't have... Jew, which is interesting. Um, let's look up Semitic. That's another interesting one. Let's have a look at Semitic, see if we have a, a definition for Semitic. So we'll see if there's Semite or Semitic here. Seminary, Seminal. Semivore, semitone. No. There's nothing for Semite or Semitic. Just skip some semitone, semi vowel. Nothing for Semite. So nothing there for Semite. Which I'm I'm not surprised about, to be honest with you. I feel like, yeah, I'm not surprised. Saracens, I think I looked up Saracens before and I don't think I found anything as well. Could I'll have a look. I could be wrong. I'm not even sure if I found anything in the large dictionary for Saracens. Because I was obviously interested in juxtaposing that with the term more to see if there's any kind of reference or any differentiation between the two. But um 
sarcasm. No, we should be of Sarabond. No. No, we go from straight from Sarabond to sarcasm. So we can say, I'm show you the top of the dictionary. You can see here, there's nothing for Saracen. Sarcal, sarcophagus. Oh my goodness me. All right, so brace yourself for this one, guys. Brace yourself for this one. Oh my gosh. This is... This is gonna blow your mind. Now bear in mind this is eighteenth this is nineteenth early nineteenth century, eighteen twenty seven. Have a look at this guys. Sarcophagus. Eating or feeding on flesh. <sighs> now you know why I'm exhaling there. Why would the definition of sarcophagus be eating or feeding on flesh. I don't want to jump the gun there, but I feel like that must have something to do with the eating of the mummies. Could it? I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, am, am I jumping the gun here? Is there a more logical explanation for why the definition of sarcophagus would be eating or feeding on flesh. And then we have sarcophagus, a tomb below, but. Yeah, I don't know what that, I don't know what that is, but that's, that's, that's really like, whoa, whoa. Okay, yeah, I could, uh, look. I'm happy to be wrong on this, by the way. I'm always happy to research and find out that, you know, I'm just trying to think. What's the... the no. Yeah, I can't think of anything there. I was thinking maybe it's related to the esophagus or something. But no, this is sarcophagus eating or feeding on flesh. I don't know. I don't know. I, anyway, I'm happy to be corrected. Feel free to jump in there. <laughs> Feel free to jump in there, guys. Okay. Because um, I could be wrong. One second. Oh, I've got a bunny to update my feed. Goodness me, I'm so far behind. I actually thought I was doing well zooming ahead. So many things to look up. Um... Ethiopia, nothing there. Okay, someone told me to look at Ethiopia with an A. That's a good point, because I did look up, when I looked it up, I looked at it with the ETH, so that's a, a point. Could be using the older Greek spelling. So let's have a look. If Ethiopia exists, that will be interesting. So we have aerology, aerial, no, it doesn't look like Ethiopia exists either. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, nothing. So nothing, unfortunately, for Ethiopia. Antarctica, well, I'm on A, so let's have a look and see if that pops up as well. Once again, it's not very good of places, so I'm not holding my breath here. That'll definitely be maybe more of a job of a... If there were like people called Antarcticans, that might show up, but I don't think it would just give us a place name in this dictionary. Antagon Antark. Oh, wait. oh, there you go. I jumped the gun. Here we go. Antarctic, relating to the Southern Pole. That's all it says there. So it just says Antarctic, relating to the Southern Pole. Yeah. Um, Egyptus, I think we're on that same A thing. Well, we, I don't think we'll, well, we can have a look. Let's see if Egyptus is here. A arrow, A, no, there's nothing with that A kind of start. So, nothing A Egyptus. Let me look at Egypt or Egyptian. 
Let's look at Gypsy, actually. Let's look at Gypsy, first of all. Because I'd imagine that does exist somewhere. So GYB, Gymnast, Gypsum. Which I, oh, no, it's not here either. So nothing for Gypsy. Let's look at Egypt, see if that's here. What's up? How are we doing for time? 10.30, blimey. We have been going for an hour and a half. we going in. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel a bit tired. I might cut this off soon. We could always do uh, additional parts to this. And I could always get other old texts and stuff for us to refer to. There's no harm. I think we've got all the time in the world to do stuff like this, which is good. Agree, nothing, nothing for Egypt to either or, or anything like that. So none of those places. Indigenous. That's an interesting one. Let's have a look. Let's look up Sudan as well, actually. Someone said look up Sudan. So we'll look up Egy indigenous first. And then we'll look up we'll look up Sudan first, then we'll look up indigenous. So Sudan, I have a feeling it might be spelled S-O-U, but I'll try. Well, I'll try S-O-U first of all, because I've seen it spelled that way on kind of old maps. So it might be spelled that way here. And then I'll try S-U-D-A-N. So let's see the S-O-U. Sorry, Sovereign. That's interesting. There's no... Oh, no. There you go. That's Oh, why does V come before U? So V comes before U. <laughs> <laughs> in some of these words, which is interesting and unexpected. Sound, soul, sort, nothing for Sudan. Let's try SU. SU. So we have sedation, sudden, suction, no, nothing for Sudan. Or Sudani or anything like that. Um, indigenous. Someone asked me to look up. Let's have a look there quickly. Boom, 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 boom. Indigo. In the. Indigen, indigenous, native to a country. That's pretty much the same as what it means today, isn't it? Yeah, so native to a country. You know, that makes me think Aboriginal. Should we see if that's there as well? Was that a term being used back here? I doubt it. But let's have a look anyway. Maybe it's here. I doubt it though. I feel like that's a new term. Don't feel like that how we'll have ancient roots, but let's have a look if they were calling anyone Aboriginals at this time. Abo Absolute Absent Abrupt Abr Abul Abom Abor Aborigines, Aborigines, the primitive or original inhabitants of a country. There you go. So Aborigines here says the primitive or original inhabitants of a country. So this is not restricted to Australasia or Oceania. This is extensive globally. So this is the term for essentially maybe natives the primitive or original inhabitants of a country were called aborigines so we just i want to look for comparison and see what it says for native if it has anything for native if there's a difference between the definition of a native if it exists so that was quite interesting so aborigines was there let's have a look at native and see what we have there 
So any, I remember ends really brief. We spoke about that earlier, didn't we? Which is really weird. Nation native, one born in any country, offspring, a natural, not artificial origin. So it's interesting that it says one born in any country, offspring. So that word offspring kind of makes me feel like that's the differentiator between a native and an Aboriginal. Because a native is someone who's born in a particular country. And that makes sense. Because when you think about it, if you're saying you're native, it means you are of the nation. Okay. Or national. So that's, they have the same roots. So we have nation, a people distinct from others. National, public, general, not private. And then nativity, okay, means birth, doesn't it? It's the birth, state, place of birth, nativity. We have the nativity scene, the, the birth of Christ, so to speak. And then we have a native, one born in a country. So a native is very different from an um, Aborigine. Because we have a native who's born in the country and their offspring are in that country and as a result they're native. But then in comparison we have an Aborigine whose people are the, and it's amazing how the term Aborigine has been erased or at least associated with a single group of people in Australasia when Actually, that's the correct term. And I guess not having that term makes it stops people from asking the question, who are the Aborigines of certain lands? Who's the Aborigines of America? Who are the Aborigines of Europe? Who are the Aborigines of South America? And have you noticed no one asked that? Everyone's just okay with the natives. And the natives don't necessarily have to have been there that long. They, they could just be born there. That's very interesting. So I'm just going to go back to Aborigine again so we can have a look at the difference of the definition. It could help if I could spell. There we go. Aborigines, the primitive or original inhabitants of a country. Say so the original or the primitive inhabitants of a country. Aboriginal versus a native who is someone who was born in a country. I find that very interesting. Sorry, that that's very fascinating. So there you go. You ask your question. You ask yourself the question. Then are you a native, or are you an Aboriginal, or are you neither? And obviously, no judgment here. Just interesting to know the difference. Okay, guys, I'm not gonna lie. It's now ten forty-two, and as much fun as I am having, and I am having an immense amount of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm also feeling a bit tired and this has been a relatively long stream. I feel like we should um, do this again. And I, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely not against the idea of, so I'm just trying to pull something up here. Yeah, I'm definitely not against the idea of us indulging in this again. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic fun. But it's, yeah, like I said, it's ten. It's ten. It's quarter to eleven here, which isn't that late because sometimes the time that I start live streams. But because I've got another live stream tomorrow, I don't want to burn myself out. <laughs> essentially, um, got some really good feedback and other words in the chat. So those of you who have given me recommendations, make sure you're here for part two. Um, and we'll keep. Yeah, we'll keep doing this because uh, this has been really interesting. Um, some of the words have been very surprising. Um, yeah, and some of them have been yeah very normal, as you can as you can imagine. Not every word is going to be a revelation, but I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, thank you guys for joining in. Um, please do hit up the likes and stuff. Um, yeah <laughs> uh hit up the likes thank you for joining me 
and yeah, I'll put up. I promise you, I'll, I'll put a the, yeah that that thumbnail that I made. I'll I'll put that up again, and we'll do a part two and a part three, and maybe I'll have other books that we can kind of look into together and read definitions together. But yeah, I really I really enjoyed that, guys. Thank you for being very much involved. I mean, I'm just looking through the chat now. It is absolutely popping. So yeah, that's the best way to do it. Thank you, guys. And for those of you who will be joining me tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow when we have, we'll be live with Nubi Anada and we'll be um, live reacting to um, my documentary, 1925. So yeah, thank you guys once again. It's been absolutely blessed. Um, much, much appreciation um, for that donation that I was given as well. Um, it really does go a long way. So yeah, thank you everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Let me just let this comment sink in, please. Yeah, if someone could be a goat and <laughs> make timestamps, that would be amazing. <laughs>